Okay, friends, we're back. Let's start with a little Luxo lamp from Pixar. We're gonna explore some of the basics of digital painting today. Again, in this Fundamentals of Art Rage series, um, I do wanna do some just fundamentals. And the thing we're gonna do today is look at light. And we're gonna look at how light um, can be enhanced with blend modes. We're gonna look at some of the ways that we might break down a really simple subject. So here's just a drawing of a sphere. And notice how I don't draw the sphere by drawing one long contour line wrapping around the whole surface. Instead, I draw sort of like a, um, a re rectangular, um, almost like comic book circle, you know, drawn with all of these dynamic angular marks of different lengths to make the circle itself, the sphere itself, as interesting as possible. Notice also, on a separate layer, I went to layers and added a new one on the layer palette. Um, I, I added some guide marks for where the light coming from this little Luxo lamp would be hitting the ball, the sphere, and therefore where the cast shadow would be. So you can create long, linear, straight lines by holding the control key while using whatever tool you want, whether it's the oil brush or the paint brush or the watercolor brush or whatever. And, and that's a nice way to make kind of custom guides if you're trying to come up with something that's, you know, really accurate, say. Um, here, I, I don't usually draw like that for, for something like this, but I thought it would be helpful for those people that might. Now, here's what I'm doing today. I'm just drawing a blue ball, like a, a blue sphere, kind of like an Earth-like or um, Neptune-like structure um, with one strong light source and just that cast shadow. And um, I wanted to talk about how we go from that kind of split of light and dark, where you just split the sphere into um, dark tones and, and, and high key tones, and how you then go beyond that to make something that looks a little more realistic. Well, the first thing you have to do is put in a little reflected light, and that's what you see me working into that dark side of the sphere, just putting in some reflected light, which helps show that there's light bouncing off of the surface, whatever that tabletop is, um, back into the shadow side of the sphere. And that helps create that um, core shadow that goes be kind of um, between that refle reflected light and then the highlight. And also making sure that that reflected light is not brighter than the highlight. So um, here I'm gonna be using some of the background gray, I have a toned canvas. It's just this soft gray color to kind of help, um, actually just to help make the demo look a little nicer because you're not staring at a bright white screen. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of maybe nice to look at for your values as well. So here again, I'm just kind of working in and around, giving my edges a little bit more energy, a little bit more visual pop, and adding in little reflected lights um, and then highlights. <clears throat> Now, this is uh, kind of a fun part. Um, I'm just kind of playing with blend modes and looking at how if I add a, set, a third layer here and I set the blend mode to overlay, how I can, you can already see, I can paint over the already existing painting and enhance the lighting dramatically. It's also important to think about, it's not just adding sort of like um, an intensity to the light, but it's also a way of adding color to the light. Um, we know that light is colorful. We know that like even the sun's light, we can compare the rich colors that come from it in the afternoon when the light starts to turn more orange. Um, and then and then right, you know, when the, that's like that sunset color where everything is peach. And it's not just the light that changes there, right? This, the light that's coming from the sun is changing everything from the color of, of the brick homes to the color of our cars, to the long light across, that's angling across the streets or whatever, but is also changing the shadows. So we have richer, more violet, more blue colors coming into the shadows than you get during the midday light. Um, so it's not just your lights that change color, it's your shadows and there's, there's so much color in your shadows. If you ever would love to see an artist that um, was a master of this, look at Joaquin Soroya. You'll see that he has paintings of all these figures on the beach or under canopies at the beach or where the light is bouncing all over the place. And all these figures that are almost entirely in shadow, but everything about them, their garments, their hair, their their faces, their hands, it just 
just just saturated with color and here's the, what i'm using here i'm just kind of using that that concept where i painted in an orange background maybe this is an orange tabletop and i'm using that overlay blend mode here on um, that middle layer and i'm painting orange reflecting light reflected light bouncing into the sphere i'm painting um, yellow highlights i'm painting blue violet shadows and i'm using that all those colors overlaid on top working these peaches into the background to give that feeling of light bouncing everywhere and that impact of the light and the um the way that there there's so much color and energy in those colors that you can paint just a simple sphere and it's crazy fun to look at because you're going after and grabbing all of the cool things that are happening in the lighting situation well of course here i'm painting out of my head so i'm not like observing a sphere on an orange tabletop or a, a tabletop with an orange cloth across it but i am just kind of showing you how much stronger this piece looks with that blend mode on and that blend mode off and you can see it here when it's on it just has a, that punch and um and i think that that's a, just a really cool thing to share about kind of how light works and just thinking about light and thinking about shadow and how color temperature really has a lot to say about your your highlights and your shadows um, sometimes you'll get someone who's a really great technician and their their perspective is perfect and their drawing is so good and um, but when it comes to color things kind of fall apart and everything looks kind of dead uh, skin tones look look chalky and um, the grasses look artificial and the the skies look flat and there's no feeling of light you know there might be value shift but there's no feeling of light and a lot of times that feeling comes from the richness in the color temperatures and those transitions between warms and cools and the the way that you have um so many transitions between um like you even just like a fence right you have that that horizontal fence in your picture um but from top to bottom, you're going to get different kinds of reflected light from the grass up on that fence. So that there's going to be more green. So if it's in the sun, like that hot green color bouncing into the lower part of the fence and up at the top, there's not going to be as much intensity of that green. There's just so much happening in the interplay of color and, and light that you really, really, really um, have to pay attention. And, and you don't have to use this overlay blend mode strategy. That's just sort of a shortcut a fun way to play with it and with something I wanted to show you. Um, again, here's what I'm, I'm I'm using a lot of these same techniques on just the blue person's face. Now, what's cool about painting anything, whether it's a portrait or a ball or, or a car, or whatever, um, is it will always read right if the values are good. Um, so here, like, you know, we've been talking about color temperature, talking about color, but really value is the most important thing. You can't fake out the values I and mean, you can't fix the values with color but you can enhance the values with color so get the values right but then um here i'm doing it just with a monochromatic kind of a little bit desaturated blue and then it just just painting this guy that's you know completely out of my head and just goofy and it's just fun mostly just having fun with the brilliant art uh art rage brush strokes it's just love how the tools work they're just so fun to play with but then i want to go back and um once i strike the highlights um you know right the, the bridge of the nose above the top lip on the wet part of the bottom lip on the cheekbone and that forehead where the forehead turns from the forward facing to the side facing to forehead and then just put in some shadows but um kind of pushing the lights pushing the darks um, but again it's all monochromatic nailing the values um but let's let's play with some colored light here just like we did before so i'm on a blend mode that that's set again set to overlay and here i'm using some sort of like an orange uh peach kind of color just to give some enhancement to this blue and then i'll take this deeper blue purple and just kind of lay in into some of those um obvious shadows and then switch it up move a little more into the teals and, and start to add a more a little more variety and you can see how that overlay layer is just it's sort of just 
allowing sort of a speed paint. And now, of course, the uh, the traditional art equivalent to this is tinting. You know, you can wait till a layer dries, whether it's oil or acrylic or whatever, and then you can um, loosen the paint or wet it down quite a bit so that you're just looking at a, a really thin mix of tinted color with quite a bit of water or whatever, um, linseed oil or whatever, something like that, if you're using oil paint. And then you, you paint it on. Right, so then, or liquid or something, right? So um, you paint it over and then you get to sort of tint the surface. With digital, that is immediate. You don't have to wait for drying. You don't have to wait for anything. You just grab color, slap it on, and you can quickly and easily change it. So, so convenient. So here I just kind of merged all my layers together, all my visual, uh, visible layers um, under the layers palette. And then I also wanted to go to edit filter. Now, this is a really cool tool. It helps a lot, you know. So let's say you draw one of the eyes too big, one of the eyes too small, one of the eyes too far away from the the other eye, the one the eyes get squished and lengthened out. Whatever happens, we all have drawing problems in our work. And um and so this warp tool, it's under um edit filter warp, and this allows you to bloat, pinch, drag, pull, uh twist, um, all kinds of things. Um, in your in your work so it's a fun way to kind of fix drawing mistakes it's a fun way to make stuff goofy once you've made it you can blow up the eyes or whatever and um, it, it's just completely awesome all right so under filters there's also some basic image editing you can do color hue which is kind of like saturation hue um, brightness and contrast some just quick ways of doing some basic image editing to um, so yeah, just a couple tips for Art Rage and a little color theory, color, color thinking and, and the way that light works. Hopefully this was helpful and you enjoyed it. Best wishes you guys and thank you so much.